Hi, and thanks for joining us for one of Family Marine's videos. My name's Tom, and today I'm here to talk about one of the questions that we get asked a lot. That question is, what is the best brand of outboard motor to buy? Um, that's a very difficult question to answer. To, in today's market, I'm going to say that there's really not a bad motor out there. Um, but I will say that not one brand of outboard motors produces the best engine in every single horsepower that they make for each and every different application that's in the marketplace today. They all have different characteristics about them. Uh, different cubic inch displacement, different power bands, et cetera, et cetera. So because we're primarily a pontoon dealer, I'm going to try to talk a lot about what's the best outboard motor for pontoons. Now, <clears throat> this may differ from bay boats or offshore boats or runabouts or fishing boats or whatever the case may be. Uh, but again, we're just going to talk about what's the best horsepower, what's the best brand name, depending on the horsepower, for a pontoon. So there are basically five different brands of outboard motors sold in the United States. There's actually a little bit more than that, but there's five major brands. Mercury, Yamaha, Honda, Suzuki, and Evinrude. Now, as I said in one of my previous videos, market share, we talked about that. Uh, the last study that I saw a few years ago said that Mercury owned 42% um, of the market share in the United States. Yamaha had 37%, and the remainder was used up by Evinrude, Suzuki, and Honda. Five, seven, eight percent per brand. I don't remember what it was. Um, now, that's not saying that Mercury and Yamaha are the best brands of motors to buy. Uh, all I'm talking about right there is market share. Uh, there are more of those two brands, Mercury and Yamaha, sold in this country than anything else. So that means that there are more dealers in this country to help you with any potential issues that you may have down the road. I think that's kind of important. As I've said many times before, I suggest to people that they buy a boat in the area that they're going to use the boat in because they want a dealer to service that motor for them. Okay, so um, again, I'm not here to criticize anybody else's outboard motor. We happen to be a Mercury and Yamaha outboard motor dealer. And the other brands that are out there are, are really good engines. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them. Again, depending on the application that you're going to be using that particular motor for. So there are basically two different types of outboard motors being produced today. There are four strokes, which are engines that are built very, very similar to what your automobile engine is. And there are two stroke direct fuel injected engines, which came out, oh, if I remember right, it was in the mid 90s when the DFIs came out. So for example, Evinrude calls them E-Tex, Mercury calls them Optimax, and Yamaha calls them High Pressure Direct Injection, HPDI. Now, over the years, all three of those manufacturers produced these two-stroke motors. Yamaha has recently dropped their HPDIs, and we've heard telltale that that also might happen with the Mercury Optimaxes. The reason for this is the statistics that I've read tells me that over 90% of the outboards sold in this country today are four strokes. The very small market for two stroke direct fuel injected engines. Um, the reason for that is what our opinion is, is the smooth, quiet fuel efficiency that a four stroke motor gives you. However, truth is, compared to a direct fuel injected engine, they are a little bit lacking in power compared to, like I say, the Mercury Optimax or the Evinrude E-Tech. I'm going to tell you that about 10% less power if you had equivalent horsepowers. So take for example, if I were a tournament bass fishing guy and I were to buy a Ranger or a bass boat, and it's important for me to get from point A to point B in a tournament, quickly. So top speed is something that's important to me on this bass boat. I would probably go with a direct fuel injected engine. They are a little bit better on top end. On a pontoon, however, 
Uh, because of the hydrodynamic design of pontoons, let's face it, they're not really fast. They don't skim across the top of the water like a bass boat does. So there's not hardly any difference in overall performance of a four-stroke versus a two-stroke in this particular application. Um, therefore, with the popularity of pontoons, the four-strokes are significantly outselling the direct fuel-injected two-strokes. Um, now, as I've said, I'm not here to criticize any manufacturer. However, I do have one issue with one manufacturer, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, um, as I said, we sell a lot of pontoons. You know, about 10 years ago, um, our most popular, and I think most dealers' most popular pontoon was a 20-foot pontoon with a 50 horse. Oh my gosh, everybody wanted a 20-foot pontoon with a 50 horse. As time has progressed, what we're finding is that a 22-foot pontoon is our most popular size, a 115 horse is our most popular size, and we're doing a lot of triple tunes, a lot of triple tunes with big horsepower on them. This happens to be a 23-footer with a 225 horsepower motor on it, big V6 4.2 liter. Um, we sell quite a few of these. They're very, very popular. People are multitasking with their pontoons today. So let's talk about that, what we call mid-range. Uh, mid-range being uh, 40 horse through 115 horse. Um, in that particular horsepower range, we do a lot of Yamahas. Uh, we're very, very happy with the Yamahas. Uh, they produce an outstanding engine. Uh, we hardly have any issues with warranty claims. Uh, they're just a, a, a very, very dependable outboard. When it gets to the 150 horsepower on up is where we start getting into a little bit of Mercury, a little bit of Yamaha. Um, in that 150 horsepower range, I'm going to say that we do more Yamahas. Uh, they make an inline four-cylinder engine and um, is very dependable, very lots of power. When we start getting into the 175, 200, 225s, depending on the application that we're talking about, uh, we might go 50-50 Mercury and Yamaha. Now, the Mercury's in the past have, have been Verados, which are supercharged four-stroke. Um, supercharged four-stroke Mercury's are, have, have absolutely fantastic uh, uh, characteristics about them. They're extremely quiet, they're extremely smooth, they got very good power. Um, quietness is something that's important to a lot of people. We had a client in last summer where they came to us and they said, listen, we've been out on a demo ride on a pontoon with a Verado. We've been out on a demo ride on a pontoon with an Evinrude, and now we're here because we'd like to take a demo ride on a Yamaha. So we took them out for a ride and, and they came back and they said, well, yeah, we liked it. It was a nice engine, happened to be a VMAX, which our truth is a little bit louder than the standard engines from Yamaha. It's more, this engine is more performance oriented. Um, so what these people told us was definitely the Verado was the most quietest engine and for them, quiet engine was extremely important. Evinrude, as they said, was the loudest and this Yamaha was kind of right in the middle. So that couple ultimately decided to go with a Verado on a Premier pontoon. Okay, so if we're talking, uh, again, what's the best outboard for a pontoon, that is. Um, as I said, they, they all have different characteristics, and let's talk about cubic inch displacement for a second. One of the things that a lot of people are doing is taking a large number of people on their pontoons. And if we're bringing that many people that much weight in a pontoon, one of the things that we need to be concerned about is cubic inch displacement. Now, I think everybody knows the more cubic inch displacement you have, the more power that you have, particularly out of the hole. Not necessarily on top end because say, for example, a 200 horse uh, small cubic inch displacement engine is still putting out 200 horse. Same thing with a large cubic inch displacement engine, still putting out 200 horse. Top speed is gonna be about the same. But it's getting there, that's the difference, especially with a loaded pontoon, is where we're going to notice the difference. So let's examine, uh, say, a Mercury Verado versus a Yamaha 
uh, 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 F200 and a VMAX 200. For example, the Mercury 200 horse inline six cylinder supercharged four stroke is 158 cubic inch displacement, which is decent power, it's good power. Where a V6 Yamaha VMAX 200 is a 256 cubic inch displacement engine. That's nearly a 100 cubic inch displacement difference between those two engines. Now, both being 200 horsepower, again, they're going to get the same top speed. But when we have that fully loaded boat and we want that power out of the hole, that's where the larger 4.2 liter 256 cubic inch displacement VMAX Yamaha is going to do a better job than a 158 cubic inch displacement inline six cylinder. Although this one is supercharged, so it's bringing that gap a lot closer together. So now, as a consumer, we have to make the decision, okay, is that kind of power important to me, or is the quietness of the Verado more important to me? Everybody differs when it comes to that opinion. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, we sell a lot of 115 horse Yamahas. Um, in my opinion, this engine is just absolutely bulletproof. Um, you could go out there and pull a number of dealers that handle Yamaha and something else and ask them, what is the most reliable 115 horsepower four stroke on the market? And if they don't say Yamaha, I'd really, really be surprised because we sell quite a few of these engines and we rarely ever have issues on these motors. Um, that's pretty much true throughout the whole line of Yamaha. As I mentioned, they're extremely dependable. So uh, we do, uh, in the mid-range anyway, 40s, uh, 50s, 60s, which are the high thrust engines, uh, 70s, 90s, 115s. Um, all those, with the exception of the 40 horse, are inline four cylinders, electronic fuel injected four strokes. Okay. Um, when it comes to some of the smaller engines, I've been banging on Yamaha quite a bit. But as I said, not one motor brand makes the best engine in every single horsepower for the particular application that you might want. Um, here's a perfect example. When we go to a 30 horsepower, we really like the Mercury 30 horse four stroke. Um, it's electronic fuel injection. Uh, this one happens to be a tiller handle. But when it comes to a 30, the Mercury is outstanding. So my point is, is that as a dealer, what we like to do is cherry pick. So we try to select the best horsepower for the particular application of boat that we're selling. This happens to be a 16 foot tiller model fishing boat. And like I say, when it comes to a 30 horsepower range, we really like the Mercury. They make a fabulous, fabulous engine. Uh, when we get up into the 40s and 50s and 60s, we like the Yamahas. Uh, 70s and 90s, we also like the Yamahas, and I mentioned that we love the 115s. Okay, so when it comes to the portable engines, um, we really like the Yamahas, particularly because they make a 9.9 in a high thrust. So if you're going to use this engine on the back of your, say, 17, 18 foot uh, side council tiller fishing boat, and you want a kicker motor, uh, this high thrust 9.9 is an awesome engine. Uh, when I say high thrust, what I mean by that is it comes with a lower gear ratio. To, so what that does is it helps propel the boat more efficiently when you have a heavy boat. It also comes with a dual thrust prop, which when we put this motor in reverse, the exhaust goes out the front of the prop and allows the blades to get clean non-aerated water, unlike most propellers. Uh, so we stock the 9.9s, 15s, 20s, and 25s in the portable engines. Okay, um, I mentioned earlier that there was one particular brand of outboard that I had a problem with. Um, that brand happens to be Evinrude. Um, one of the things that Evinrude tells you is that in order to winterize their outboards, all you have to do is push one button, turn the key, move the throttle handle, something like that. I don't remember exactly the sequence. And what that does is it winterizes your engine for you. Um, that's not anywhere near the whole truth. Um, they have a system that 
when you turn the key on and off or move the throttle lever forward, what it does is it pumps the double amount of two-stroke motor oil into the crankcase of the engine. Why do they, and they call that fogging the engine. Why do they need to do that? Well, because a two-stroke motor, the crankcase is exposed to the atmosphere, where on a four-stroke motor it is not. In other words, the air passes from the, the, the throttle body in the front of the engine through the crankcase and into the combustion chamber on a two-stroke motor. Therefore, the crankcase, rods, bearings, et cetera, et cetera, are exposed to the atmosphere. And with humidity, particularly in the wintertime, things can rust up. So they pump this double amount of two-stroke motor oil into the crankcase to coat those rods and bearings, et cetera, et cetera. Where four-stroke you don't need to because the crankcase is in enclosed. Now, the problem I have with that is, number one, they're not using fogging oil, they're using two-stroke motor oil. Two-stroke motor oil runs off leaving your bare metal exposed to the atmosphere and therefore can rust. Where fogging oil has a clinging agent built into it and that clings to the metal and prevents the metal from rusting over the winter time. The other thing that they're not telling you is that um, it doesn't stabilize the fuel and you need to stabilize the fuel. Um, it doesn't check for water in the lower unit and you need to check for water in the lower unit because it's very common to find water in your lower unit on your outboard motor and if you don't drain that you'll freeze and crack the lower unit. It doesn't grease your zerk fittings, it doesn't grease your steering um, so there's still a number of things that you have to do to winterize your outboard motor. Now granted uh, with a four-stroke motor um, it's suggested that you change oil and filter once a year um, although there's a lot of times where people come in in the fall and we check their oil and it looks nice and clean they might have 20, 30, 40 hours on it and it's really not necessary to change your oil once a year uh, but some people do anyway. Thanks so much for watching. If you're considering buying a fishing boat or a pontoon here's some easy ways to reach Family Marine. Call us to set up a private showing of any of the 50 plus boats currently in stock. Attend one of our boat shows on the second Saturday of every month of course, the best way is to simply stop in our store. Family Marine is located three miles north of Wilmer on Highway 71. Wilmer, of course, is located 70 miles west of Minneapolis on Highway 12. Visit our website at FamilyMarineBoats.com for more boat previews and check out our Buyer's Resource Center packed with educational videos for boat buyers. You can see Family Marine on Facebook, YouTube, or simply email or call us with any questions you may have. If you've enjoyed these videos, please like and comment below. Thanks again for watching. Oh.